Hi, I'm Caitlin Crowley, and we are doing the production of uh, Polylactic Acid. I'm Sarah DeFlora. Uh, we decided to do the production of polylactic acid because um, biodegradable plastics have become very popular in research over the past couple of years. Um, PLA is a more expensive product um, because it can be biodegradable and its most competitive pla other plastic is PET and PLA can be run on the same equipment as PET which is a big strength for us. Polylactic acid is PLA that it's made from corn, it's specifically made from dextrose and can be made from whey and other products like that. One of the other strengths that it has is the fact that it is a bio, it's a sustainable product, so we wanted to use renewable products because most um, polymers right now or plastics are used, are made from uh, petroleum, so that's why we actually did this and we have a lot of uh, promising things that come from doing PLA, it is recyclable products, we can reuse the same most of the same manufacturing materials that they use for other P, uh, polymers that are made. They do, um, the production actually has negative impact for carbon emissions, but it has negative, it's negative because to actually biodegrade PL, PLA, you have to have 284 degrees Fahrenheit and, Fahrenheit. And um, so it's high pressure, high temperature, and it's sold as biodegradable, but it's not necessarily biodegradable. Um, so we, what we did was an in-depth kind of look at the PLA process, which is what, what it comes down to is fermentation, the lactide formation, and polymerization. And this is kind of a basic overview of the process. Um, we also we scaled it up, so it was about. 300 million pounds a year, which is, it's a fairly large scale, but we had found one of the biggest com companies that makes it right now is Cargill and their Nature Works department. And it's a growing area of the market. They say see about a 30% increase up to going to 2012. So it's growing every year, and our market analysis is actually right here. You can see that most of it is used in packaging, and it's used in food packaging for things that are used only once. So it's a lot of times used for utensils, for plastic, plasticware, plates. They use it in um, like sandwich cartons, like the clamshells, for like only a couple days because it does it. It has a low gas barrier and oxygen barrier, so the food goes back. Um, in our process, when we looked at it more in depth, we used um, a catalyst tin octanoate, which is basically used because it ha comes out with a high dense product and it has um, high tensile strength, which is good for durability. Uh, in our process, process flow diagram, we also had some energy savings. Um, we decided that we we're going to be reusing the ammonia that comes back into the fermenter, and we're going to be using reusing other things like the butanol and the sulfuric acid. So even though it is an expensive process, by reusing um, all of these products in our facility, it will help save energy and costs. Yeah, we're also reusing the water and uh, the catalyst used most. Uh, we're using two catalysts, and at least one of them is an immobilized catalyst, so it can be uh, reused continuously throughout.